Isaiah chapter number 43. I'm just going to read several verses, not congruently, and uh, just want to pick up a little thought. This is a wonderful chapter, it deals with a whole lot. We'll be gleaning from it tonight. But let's begin reading verse number 1. The Bible says, But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by, my, by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou shalt walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Look at verse 4. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Look at verse number 5. Fear not, for I am with thee. Look down at verse number 11. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. I have declared and have saved and I have showed uh, when there was no strange God among you. Therefore ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, uh, that I am God. Look at verse 15. I am the Lord, uh, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, for the good singing. Thank you, Lord, for the sweet spirit of the Lord in the house of God tonight. Thank you for the good testimonies. Thank you for answering prayer. I pray for Brother Brian's daughters. And Lord, I'm thankful Miss Brandy reached out to him. I pray she'd come. They'd have sweet fellowship tomorrow. And I pray you'd do a work in his daughter's hearts and lives. I pray for uh, Miss Veronica's daughter, Christana, and her husband, Lord, that you'd do a work in their hearts and lives. Uh, and every one of us that have lost loved ones, lost family members, or wayward children, and, uh, God, you'd do a work. And God, you'd be glorified. Uh, and God, we'd see many uh, get their hearts right with the Lord in these last days we live in. Uh, now, Father, I pray you'd bless those working with the teens over on the other side. I pray for those young people. I pray you'd uh, insulate them, put a hedge about them. I pray that, Lord, uh, they'd hide the word of God in their hearts that they might not sin against thee. Uh, Father, I pray you'd continue to keep your hand of grace upon them and you'd continue to use them for thy glory. Uh, Lord, I'm always thankful on Monday nights uh, how many come out to go knock on doors, invite folks to Jesus and uh, to the house of God. And God, I thank you for that, and I pray you'd bless them. Uh, now, Father, I pray, uh, Lord, you'd just help us now from the Scriptures. Uh, use this unworthy vessel. Uh, glorify your namesake. Uh, touch those we mentioned that are sick. Uh, God, be with those that are providentially hindered. Uh, but, Father, again, we pray you'd be magnified, uh, high and lifted up. Uh, you'd edify your folks, illuminate our minds to thy truth. And, Father, we'll thank you for it. Uh, for it's in the wonderful and holy name of the Lord Jesus that we ask it all. Uh, amen. Uh, and amen. Uh, here we find in Isaiah chapter number 43, this is a prophetic chapter revealing uh, when God would restore his people from uh, captivity out of Babylon. Uh, but uh, we can glean and see some things that he was saying to them, uh, knowing that he is also our heavenly father, uh, knowing that he is our God, uh, knowing that he is for us, uh, that he has loved us, uh, he has redeemed us, uh, and uh, knowing that he is our God. Uh, uh, notice, if you will, first of all, the calming. Uh, look again at verse number 1. He said, But now thus saith the Lord uh, that created thee, O Jacob, uh, he that formed thee, O Israel, uh, fear not. Uh, I, I said a little bit about fear this morning, uh, but can I say that 170 times in your Bible uh, you'll find that phrase, fear not. Uh, uh, can I say when you put the Lord uh, in the proper place in your life, uh, when he sits on the throne of your heart, uh, when you meditate on him, when you study him, uh, when you look unto him, uh, uh, friend, uh, uh, fear will subside you, perfect love casteth out 
all fear. Uh, uh, we have nothing to fear is uh, uh, when God is for us, who could be against us? Uh, and when the Lord uh, is the Lord of our life, uh, friend, no matter what we face, uh, we can find solace in Him. Uh, he uh, it gives them a calming uh, 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 assurance. And can I say, no matter what you're going through, He's got a peace that passes all understanding. He calms them. We see him saying, fear not. Now notice, uh, if you will, the conversion. Look again in verse number 1. Uh, he goes on to say, uh, for I have redeemed thee. I'm glad I'm redeemed tonight. Amen. Sing that old song, redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. Uh, that word redeem means to buy back. Uh, and can I say, uh, we've been sold out to slavery. Uh, we were on the auction block of sin. Uh, uh, the chains of sin had us bound. Uh, there was nobody that could pay our sin debt, no, sin debt nor wanted to. Uh, but aren't you glad that the Lord, uh, he said, I'll pay their sin debt. Uh, and he did on the cross. Calvary when he shed his blood uh, to be our propitiation uh, and he redeemed us uh, he uh, 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 made us uh, children of the king uh, uh, by paying for our sins what a blessing I'm thankful that I'm redeemed tonight uh, we see the conversion by the way to be converted means you're changed from one state to another I once was lost but now I'm found I once was a sinner now I'm saint hmm I once was a, a, a product of this world, but I'm going to the glory world. What a blessing, all because of what Jesus Christ did for me when I called upon him some 50 years ago. We see the calming. We see the conversion. Uh, notice, if you will, the call, verse number 1. He said, I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. Aren't you glad that the Lord made us one of his? He called us from this state to his state. What a blessing. We mentioned that a little bit this morning. We are Christians not by, by uh, association or, or religion or anything. We're Christians by our spiritual birth and by being identified with the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm glad the Lord called us to be saved. I'm glad he calls us to serve. But we see that. Now notice, if you will, the course. Look at verse number 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Three times he uses that word through. That word through means from end to end. And can I say sometimes you enter a storm. But he says he'll bring you through. You enter it. You're coming out of it. It also means from one side to the other. Can I say that when you got on the old ship of Zion, you're passing from this world to the other side. Hmm? That word through means uh, from the beginning to the end, and it means all the way. Uh, uh, can I say that no matter what befalls us, he uses uh, uh, the waters, the rivers, the fire, uh, 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 things that are tangible, that they knew what uh, that meant, uh, whether they were crossing a river, whether they were on a boat on the sea, or whether they were facing uh, 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 great uh, 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 fire and intensity. Uh, can I say, he said, I will be with thee, and I will will bring thee through uh, and what a blessing to know that he'll never leave us uh, nor forsake us uh, and he's not going to just leave us here uh, he's bringing us through no matter what we face uh, and I bless the Lord with that all of that in mind notice why we're created verse number 7 even everyone that is called by my name for I have created him uh, for my glory I have formed him yea I have made him you and I that are saved know we were bought with a price that our life is no longer our own but the Lord created us for his glory and when we trusted in him we did glorify him mm, all the devil lost grip and the, the Savior got glory but he gets glory continually from our lives when we're obedient, when we're doing that which he'd have us to do. He created us and he formed us. He bought us for one reason, to give him glory. Now let me just say this. 
Brother Ray, nobody ever signs up for a trial. Nobody ever says, Boy, I, I hope uh, the Lord brings hardship to me, except Bailey. Bailey signed up for it when she get ready to marry him. As you do know Brittany Vining is going to be your mother-in-law. And every mother-in-law joke does apply. Oh, she got red in the face right there, huh? But we don't like trials. Miss Marcy, we don't like hardships. Miss Gracie, you ain't old enough to know it, but when you go to Purdue, you're going to have a lot of hardship. Look what I did, well, look what I did in the business dawn. Huh? Hmm? Huh? But seriously, we don't sign up for that. Miss Brandy, did you say, Lord, give me cancer? No, you didn't sign up for that. Huh? Miss Jackie, did you say, Lord, help me to fall and bust up my ankles so I can walk around in a boot? No, we, didn't, we, don't, we don't ask for trials. Brother Ron, did you pray, Lord, to, uh, uh, cause my daughter to lose fellowship with me for all them years? No, we don't pray those things. Amen. But Brother Clint, if God places us in a trial so that he can get glory, isn't it worth it? No matter how hard, no matter how intense, no matter how painful, Brother Charlie. I mean, you can do anything. He was in a submarine, man. You can do anything. Lord have mercy. 20 years in a submarine. That guy, he's messed up. But anyway, <laughs> wouldn't it be worth it if God gets glory? Amen. You see, so many times when we're going through things, we think God is mad at us. Or we think, uh, 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 I deserve this. Or we wonder where God is at. And we heard a lot of preaching on that this past week. Uh, uh, but w it, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could change our mindset? Uh, and I've tried to tell you all this, that we're in God's hands. Uh, and if it comes to us, it's got to come through God's hand. God had to allow it to happen. Uh, and if God allowed it to happen, uh, God's got an end to the mean, a means to the end. And he knows how to bring us through. Uh, wouldn't it be all right if our mindset was, I don't know why I'm here. I sure don't enjoy being here in my flesh. This is hard, but it didn't catch the Lord by surprise. And the Lord is a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. The Lord will help me through this. And if this is what it takes for God to get glory out of my life, it is worth it for all that he suffered in order to pay for my sins. It would be worth it if he can get glory from my life. Amen. God help us to... Keep that mindset. It's not always easy. But if we can have that mindset, even so, Lord Jesus, be glorified in it. But I'm not going to preach on that. That's real heavy stuff right there. I'm interested in this thought tonight. I'm going to preach on the responsibility of a child of God. Now, God saved us just not to take us to heaven. Somewhere along the line, we got to listen to Joel Olstein and started believing that stuff. Right. Can I say that it was God's intent for us to go to heaven from the beginning? Amen. But man chose to sin, and that put an ankle on all of it. Uh, so God had to make a way to redeem us. Of course, he, uh, the Lord Jesus was the lamb slain uh, before the foundation of the world. Uh, uh, he knew we would fail. He knew there had to be a way to redeem us. Uh, and God made a way. Uh, but my dear friends, uh, God didn't just save us to take us to, uh, to, for, to take us to heaven. If that was the case, uh, when we got saved, he'd just take us to heaven. Uh, he saved us to bring glory to him. Uh, and in bringing glory to him, there are responsibilities uh, in being a Christian. Amen. Somewhere along the line, people got it in their minds that, well, I'm saved that's all that matters. Says who? They obviously haven't read a whole lot of his book. Right. Can I say he didn't save us to serve ourselves? There are some responsibilities in being a child of God. And I find many of them in this chapter right here. Let me give you a few things. We'll go to the house tonight. But can I say the child of God, first of all, is to carry. Look in verse number 8. The Lord says, Bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. Now can I say that people that are blind uh, 
cannot follow GPS directions. A thousand feet turn right. Two miles turn left. They don't know how far two miles are. Turn right on this road or turn left on it. They don't know the name of the road. They don't even see the road. Can I say deaf people, you can talk to them all day long, uh, but if they got their back to you and they don't know how to read your lips, uh, uh, they can't hear what you're saying. Can I say that you have to make a way to get them to where they need to go? And the Lord is saying to bring them, uh, bring the blind that have eyes, uh, bring the deaf that have ears, uh, bring them to me uh, and can I say uh, uh, we live in a world that people have been blinded from the glorious light of the gospel uh, they have believed every kind of philosophy that this world has given them uh, except uh, that they must repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and can I say uh, you can tell them they need the Lord uh, you can give them a gospel track uh, but if you don't uh, uh, go out of your way to help bring them to Jesus help bring them to the house of God uh, uh, there are those uh, that have heard the gospel but they turn deaf ears to it uh, we've got to show them uh, we've got to bring them uh, we've got to get them to a place uh, where God can do a work in their heart and life like he did ours uh, we're to carry some folks I'll never get, forget that message. I shouldn't. I've heard it three times. But I'll never forget that message from Brother Greg Neal. He's still on the mountain. And those that were lame, they had to put on their back and carry them up the mountain to Jesus. Uh, those that were uh, maimed, those that were blind, those that uh, uh, had physical ailments, they had to physically get involved to get them to Jesus. Uh, uh, it cost them something. Uh, it was heavy for them. Uh, it wore them out. Uh, but they still got them to Jesus. Uh, and Jesus did a miraculous thing on that uh, mountain that day. Uh, he healed those that came to him. Uh, and yet those that brought them, uh, he fed them something for them uh, uh, can I say uh, it is our responsibility to get folks to Jesus no matter what the cost is uh, God help us to realize one of our responsibility is to carry or get folks to Jesus Lord help us to get under the burden of getting folks to Jesus uh, can I say that another responsibility of the child of God is to convene Look in verse number 9. Look what the Bible says. Let all the nations be gathered together and let the people be assembled. Can I say the church, the local church, is the assembly of the Lord Jesus Christ? That we're to come out from uh, 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 the world and come together and assemble under the umbrella of grace uh, and assemble to worship the Lord uh, assemble uh, uh, to lift up holy hands toward heaven and say blessed be the name of the Lord uh, to sing songs of praise unto him uh, uh, to bring an offering to him uh, uh, to hear what thus saith the Lord uh, and be obedient to his voice uh, we are to assemble and worship say preacher why do we have church as much as we do because we're required to I don't know about you, but I need the house of God. I need to be around God's people. I need uh, the fellowship of the saints of God, but I need to be in worship with the saints of God. The book of Ephesians tells us uh, what a blessed thing uh, uh, for us to be among the brethren. Hmm? What a blessing to be counted as one of God's people. Uh, how come folks don't have any problem assembling with 100,000 folks to watch a football game at a college football arena or 67,000 people to go watch the Bungles or 44,000 people to go watch the Reds on Bobblehead Night? How come they have no problem assembling for anything worldly? But yet, preacher, you're asking us to come to church? Well, I'm going to heaven. That's all that matters. I can worship God at the house. Uh, well, give me chapter and verse on that. Hmm. It's our responsibility to assemble. Uh, and boy, I'm sure glad we got a church where we can come to. Hmm. 
I'm glad that we've got a place where we can come and we can worship. I'm glad we've got a place where we can come be transparent. Uh, I'm glad we can come in here and we're amongst our kind. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of folks that over the years that have come here from other churches, they they it just kind of overwhelms them at first. They really don't think that this many people are this nice. You know what I'm talking about? Huh? Can I say, I'm invited places to preach, and there are people who won't even come up and shake your hand. Huh? There are people who really think, these people got to be fake. Come on, Brother Ed, didn't you think that when you first showed up? Huh? These people can't be this nice. Huh? But you've been here, what, three or four years? What do you think, two years? It's been two? It seems like three or four. You wear on me. <laughs> so what do you think? Do you think they're really this nice? Yes, I do. There they are. Huh? Are they really this accepting? They are, aren't they? Huh? I don't even mess with you. Huh? Huh? So what you all don't know is about 24 years ago, 24 and a half, the Lord gave me a message on the ministry of Emmanuel. And there were folks like Brother Clint for about 10 years watched this church go through problem after problem, preachers coming, preachers leaving, being a time without a preacher. And there were folks that came from other churches that had faced grave things. And the Lord gave me a message on the ministry of Emmanuel. We all know what it's like to be hurt. Let's just make up our minds we're never going to go back to that. Let's just love people where they're at. And let's just come together to worship the Lord. Uh, and Brother Brian, for whatever reason, God honored it. And folks just love people around here. We even loved you when you come in. I wish these folks could have seen what you looked like when you first came here. Uh, you was a mess. She wasn't. You was. But look what God's done. You get up, you can't even say anything without weeping. Uh, this a guy got saved, and he, and, and, and he went out to get on his Harley and got under conviction because he had skulls all over it, took spray paint and painted over all them skulls because he said a Christian shouldn't drive something like this. huh? That's a blessing. It's an ugly paint job, but that's a blessing, huh? No, it wasn't. Huh? You knew what he's like before he got saved. Look at him. Big change. Isn't God good? Huh? God's good. Huh? I'm just trying to say it is our responsibility to assemble. And when we assemble, we don't come out to judge people. We come out to worship the Lord. And when folks come and somebody has carried somebody into our midst, uh, what a blessing. Uh, uh, let's make them feel welcome. Uh, let's try and get them to Jesus. Uh, maybe they're saved and they've gotten away. Let's get them back to Jesus. Uh, maybe they're lost, let's get them to Jesus. Uh, maybe they're hurting, let's get them to Jesus. Uh, by the way, He's the answer for everything. Huh? Uh, it's our responsibility to convene. Uh, I've been in church for two straight weeks. I can't imagine how they did it down there in North Carolina for over eight. I want to tell you, physically it'll wear you out. But there's just something inside when it's church time. Mm, you know what I'm saying? Huh? Uh, can I say the child of God is not only to carry and convene, but the child of God is to certify some things. Look at verse number 9 again. Let all the nations be gathered together. Let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this and show us former things? Let them bring forth their witnesses uh, that they may be justified, or let them hear and say it is truth. Uh, can I say, uh, when we come, somebody's got to certify that Jesus is Lord. Uh, somebody's got to put up uh, their hands and say, Blessed be the Lord. Uh, 
somebody needs to jump up like Brother Phil and say, uh, hey, I'm worth it. Uh, uh, what the Lord did is real. Uh, hey, when we come together, uh, every song ought to witness that Jesus is Lord. Uh, everybody that testifies ought to testify that Jesus is Lord. Uh, how he's changed their life. Uh, the Word of God is a testimony uh, that God is Lord. Uh, everything we do should witness to the fact uh, that Jesus is Lord uh, and we love him and how he's changed our lives. Uh, can I say it's our responsibility to certify these things. If we don't tell the world he's Lord, who will? Uh, God help us. Can I say that in our community, don't get me wrong, there's some wicked people, but moreover, most people that live in this community are good moral people. In October, I'll be here 25 years. Brother Ray, in 25 years, knocking on doors and passing out tracks, I've never had anybody slam a door in my face. Now, when we were over there at Orchard Street, we did. There's a bunch of old, died in the wool Catholics. They hated seeing us come out. Uh, but I'm saying in this community, folks have just been, well, I've had them offer me Pepsi Colas, some bottles of water. I've seen them sick their dog on Brother Ray. It's a blessing. It's funny. Uh, I've seen him skip every house that has a dog in it. You know, he's scared to death of them, huh? What can I say? By and large, those in our neighborhoods are good moral people. Most of them, we would say, believe in God. I didn't say they know Him, but they believe in God. Uh, most of the people in this area are hardworking and care about their neighbors and about mm, our community in general. But can I say, they still need to hear Jesus loves them. And Jesus will save them and change their lives. And God help us to realize somebody has to tell them. We can't assume they know. Uh, I'll never forget a, a fellow that went on to be one of the greatest teachers of why the King James Bible is the Word of God that I knew in my young, early years. Uh, he was a drunk by his own testimony. Was at the house one day, somebody knocked on his door and said, do you believe in God? He said, well, I guess I do. He said, the person said, well, the devils believe and they fear and tremble. Left him to track and turned around and walked off. And he couldn't get away from that. He said, if the devils believe in God and they fear and tremble, I don't fear and tremble. He couldn't get over that. Guess what happened? He went to church, got born again. What a blessing. Somebody just needs to tell folks that the Lord loves them. And that's our job. That's our responsibility those you work with those that you live around those you go to school with you may be the only hope for them to make it to heaven God help us to certify be a witness that the Lord is God can I say the child of God it's our responsibility to confirm some things look again in verse number 9 he said uh, uh, let them bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified or let them hear and say it is truth. Can I say it's one thing when one person stands up and says, the Lord changed my life. And then when somebody else stands up and says, yes, the Lord changed my life, that confirms it. And somebody else and somebody else and somebody else. It's kind of like this. Somebody said the Clintons can't suicide us all. Tell me you'll get a hold of that. If everybody comes out against the Clintons ends up committing suicide in weird ways. Huh? They might shut one of us up, but if we just keep confirming, they can't shut us all up. They've been trying to do that for 2,000 years. They've been trying to shut the Christians' mouths up for 2,000 years, but you know what the Bible says? That the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of the living God. You know why we have a church day? Because the generation before us just kept confirming the gospel, kept confirming the word of God, kept confirming the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. 
I thank God for the perpetuity of the church. That is our responsibility to continue to confirm. Why do you think we're teaching them young people back there tonight? Why do you think we do so much with our young people? Why do you think we have Sunday school? Why do you think we do all the ministries that we do? It is constantly affirm that Jesus is Lord and put the Bible into this generation and the generation to come. Uh, because without it, the world will get in a bigger mess than what she's in. Thanks be unto God for those that just keep confirming the Bible. Hmm? Can I say, the world wants to know if it's true. You know how we show them it's true? By being real. You know, being real doesn't mean wearing a neon uh, uh, t-shirt that says Jesus is Lord. Anybody can do that. Being real is if you get knocked down, get back up and keep living for Jesus. Being real means every day show this world what Jesus has done in your life. Just face adversity, face the rivers, face the water, face the fire, and just keep serving Jesus. Amen. We've got a few young people in here. Young people, you have to Google this. Anybody seen the movie Rocky? You know why everybody loves Rocky? He just kept getting back up. Huh? Amen. Nobody gave him any hope of beating Apollo Creed. He didn't in the first one. But he just kept getting back up. Huh? Can I say? It was so, everybody fell in love with it so much, they made Rocky II. And that one he beat Apollo Creed. Huh? Can I say, just keep getting back up. Everybody pulls for somebody that overcomes the odds and just keeps getting back up. And can I say, in our own strength, we're not able. But in the power of his might, we can keep getting back up. Huh? Just keep trusting the Lord. Keep living for God. Listen, I'd like to say everybody's super spiritual and you're never going to have any problems and you're never going to mess up. We fail the grace of God every day. And some days we step in a mud puddle. Step in a mud puddle, get your foot out of the mud puddle, get it cleaned off and go on down the road. And sometimes we get knocked over in a ditch. What can I say? Get it under the blood, get up and go on. Bless the Lord that He loves us enough to allow us to get back up. Uh, now, I know folks that are out of church tonight because they're wallowing in self pity. God didn't put them on a juniper tree, they went and found one, or they created one in their mind, and they're just, Woe is me, woe is me, woe is me. If they'd ever get their eyes on Jesus, they'd solve a lot of that. We're to confirm some things. I can tell you I'm a Christian. That won't do much. I've got to show you I'm a Christian. Then right. I thought about this. I'll be done. The responsibility of a child of God is to choose to serve the Lord. You're here tonight because you chose to be here tonight. Right. Now, I could preach to those that aren't here, but what good's it going to do to them? Amen. Although, Brother Ron... If they're a member of the church and they choose not to be here, I'm not talking about those that are providentially hindered. I'm not talking about those that are sick in the hospital. I'm talking about folks that choose not to be here, could be here. They're just as responsible for the message as if they're sitting there. At the judgment seat, they're going to give an account for it, whether they're here or not. Amen. But it's our responsibility to choose to serve the Lord. Right. Look with me, if you will. Let me read several verses here. Look in verse 11. He said, I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. I have declared, and I have saved, and I have showed when there was no strange God among you. Therefore ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, I am God, that I am God. Now look with me in verse number 13. Yea, before the day was, I am He. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? Thus saith the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake I have sent to Babylon and have brought down all their nobles and the Chaldeans whose cry is in the ships. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Sounds pretty, pretty apparent. God is letting them know He's the one. He's the one who redeemed them. He's the one bringing them out. He is God. Now look with me, if you will, down verse 22. But thou hast not called upon me, O Jacob. But thou hast not been weary of me, O Israel. 
Thou hast not brought me the small cattle of thy burnt offerings, neither hast thou honored me with thy sacrifices. I have not caused thee to serve with an offering, nor wearied thee with incense. Uh, thou hast bought me no sweet uh, cane with money, neither hast thou filled me with the fat of thy sacrifices, uh, but thou hast made me to serve with thy sins. Uh, thou hast wearied me with thine iniquities. Uh, I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions uh, for mine own sake, and will not remember thy sins. Put me in remembrance. Uh, let us plead to get together. Declare thou, uh, and that thou mayest be justified. Uh, thy first father has sinned, and thy teachers have transgressed against me. Uh, therefore I profane the princes of the sanctuary, and have given to Jacob to, to the curse, uh, and Israel to reproaches. Uh, the Lord said that they had not called upon him he was God look at all he done they hadn't called upon him they hadn't sacrificed with him they wanted to have uh, God and their sins at the same time uh, uh, can I say it doesn't work that way uh, who's on the Lord's side uh, come uh, hey uh, we must choose who will serve uh, Amen. it's our responsibility to choose the Lord Amen. even when it's not convenient can I tell you right now what is bothering Miss Crystal? Number one, she can't be with her family. But number two, she's missing church. Now, she's watching it live stream. But can I say when she had cancer a few years ago, she'd have chemo on Wednesday, and she wouldn't miss church Wednesday night. She didn't miss church because she chose to serve the Lord. She'd be here tonight if she could be. Uh, the Lord knows her heart. There are a lot of folks that make it a choice. Can I say, in my household, it's never been a choice. Sunday's church time. Wednesday's church time. If you're not providential, you're in church. It becomes a problem when we have to choose. Right. Should I go back to church tonight? That should never even be a question. It's our responsibility. But on Monday, on the job, we must choose. Am I going to serve the Lord? Amen. Tuesday, I must choose. Am I going to serve the Lord today? Nope. See, when we really show that we're Christian, it's not on Sunday and Wednesday. It's those days of the week when we're not in the house of God. And it is our responsibility to always choose Christ. Now, that sounds good rolling off the tongue. But sometimes you can just be minding your own business and run into a snare. Some days, that sorry no good devil will sneak up behind you. You don't even know he's around. And any day... We just get to looking around and not looking up to him, looking unto Jesus, we can get in trouble. But every day, we ought to start our day with the mindset, today I'm going to serve the Lord. If you start your day off with prayer and start your day off in the Bible, you're less apt to fail him that day than if you don't. It's our responsibility to choose to serve him. Hmm? I don't have to come to church, I get to come to church. I don't have to serve the Lord. I get to serve the Lord. It is never a detriment to serve the Lord. It's always a joy. To Just like Brother Phil said, it dawned on him. He was worth it. Can I say, if it ever dawns on you what Jesus really did for you, to get to do anything for him, hallelujah. Huh? Get to tell anybody about him, hallelujah. It always comes down to will. His will or our will. Will I or won't I? God help us to just choose to serve the Lord. You see, there's a lot of responsibility carrying His name. Can I say, if it was easy, everybody would do it. Oh, trust me, His yoke is easy. But putting our flesh where it needs to be under subjection it's not always easy. But when we choose 
to seek the Lord and to put him first and to carry forth his responsibilities for our life. It is a blessed life and it is a one that will certainly humble you when you realize he thought we were worth it. I wonder tonight, why don't we just make up our mind, come what way, we're going to serve the Lord. I've said this for years. History has yet to record one church that is totally sold out for the glory of God. Wouldn't it be a blessing to be that church? Can I say that that SMO crowd, SMO, Sunday morning only, That's not going to start with them. That's going to start with this crowd. When this crowd gets totally sold out, maybe that crowd will get it. I've learned this, that when the presence of God gets on God's people so strong, one of two things happen. Those that are on the fringe will get in or they'll get away. They can't stay neutral. The presence of God... It's so impactful, you've got to do something with it. So why don't we get the presence of God so real in our lives, they've got to come to a decision, they're going to do something with it. I hope they jump right in the middle of it. That's what I pray for. But if not, I'm going to serve the Lord. That's what Joshua said. God help us to get sold out. I mean totally sold out. I mean not just come to meet and sold out. I'm talking about seek Him so much that you're not satisfied with anything less. I'm telling you, the happiest you ever is the busiest you are for Christ. God help us to carry forth the responsibility he's placed in our life. Let's all stand tonight. Let Clint come get a song of invitation. But Clint, Miss Tina's picking out a song. Maybe tonight you just want to come and thank him that he thought you was worth it. The world don't. Maybe you want to come and thank him for something he's done for you in the last week. Maybe tonight you just want to come and tell him you love him. Maybe tonight you want to come and ask him to show you what you can do for his honor and for his glory. And maybe tonight the Lord will put somebody on your heart you need to be a blessing to. Maybe just be an encourager. You just be real sensitive during the invitation. And let God use you. He can use you here at the service tonight. All right, let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for these that have already come. Thank you for being a great God. You could have left us in captivity, but Lord, you redeemed us. And God, thank you for caring about us. Thank you, Lord, for being a friend and a father. Bless now this invitation. Speak to hearts. Help your people. Lord, to truly be set on fire from heaven. And God, may they blaze in this dark, depressed world. And may we see many souls come to glory. Bless now, speak to hearts. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.